Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling, here to share with you on the Total Health Channel again. Thank you for being with us from time to time. Let's ask God's presence as we uh, discuss uh, the topic for today. Heavenly Father, uh, you gave us life for these last days, and you are the light of the world. Uh, help us to be the light of the world, too, even as Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we need to see it from your perspective and your word. I ask for your Holy Spirit that uh, we can do that. And thank you for your promises, and we ask it in Christ's name. Hallelujah. I want to play tribute to a uh, woman that I appreciated as being a wise teacher in Israel. Um, her, uh, um, she worked for a, an independent ministry, and uh, uh, Ruth Zollinger was her name. Uh, she... Uh, asked me once or made the comment that if Christ were to come uh, today or tomorrow, uh, how would we know who are his and whose are not? Everybody claims to love the Lord, etc. And Christ implied in that Sermon on the Mount that many are going to say, Lord, I did this, I did that in your name, many wonderful things. And he's going to say, I never knew you. Okay. Well, uh, that's a hard one to swallow maybe, but uh, what does it mean? The word genosco for no is uh, Joseph didn't know Mary till after the child was born. It's a marital love or a covenant love. And God took Israel to a wilderness to find out what was in their hearts and to, re to reveal what was in their hearts. And it wasn't good. Uh, Forty days after they had made a covenant with God, they were worshiping a calf. Okay, uh, not, not really um, what we would expect. And so we, we need to uh, see that Ellen White's last definition of the church is right on target. That what God purposed to do for the world through Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today, even his covenant-keeping people. And to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to that ancient people. That's uh, huge. We won't go into it today uh, in, in every respect, but the covenant is what makes us his people. That's what God said in, in Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. If you keep my covenant, you'll be to me a kingdom. And so we're going to address this issue that we introduced uh, in a recent video. We said if Christ uh, were here today, he would say the same thing as he said when he came into Galilee preaching in Mark 1.15. The time is fulfilled, and we showed how that time was fulfilled, how 6,000 years are up, marked by papal visits uh, to the UN 20 years apart, we uh, revisit that if you're not familiar, but um, on the, the title of that video is The Time is Fulfilled. But uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and what kingdom is this? This is not the kingdom uh, that he announced back when he was here, that uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, the meek, the merciful. Luke 17, verse 21 says, the kingdom uh, is within you. Well, that's not what the disciples were looking for in Acts 1 6. When they said, Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? When they were walking up the hill the last time, Christ took his head and said, It's not for you to know the times and seasons. Well, uh, they would have probably gone back fishing if they'd have known it was going to be 2,000 years. Uh, he couldn't say that, so he just, uh, but the phrase, the times and seasons, was only found one previous time in the King James Bible. That's why I like the King James. It is so true in, in many respects. And in Daniel 2, verse 21, the times and seasons were linked to an external kingdom when God sets up kings and takes them down. And Paul uses that phrase one more time. It's, a, it's only found three times, in the, uh, twice in the New Testament. Christ said it wasn't for his disciples to know but Paul says, you know them perfectly. And what's the difference? Paul was putting himself into the end time. When we which are alive and remain will be caught up. And of the times and seasons, you know them. For the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night when they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. He is linking it to the sudden destruction that initiates the end time period that is a, a seven-year period, really. And that sudden destruction and the day of the Lord is linked to a huge earthquake, mega quake, we might say. It's uh, noted in, in Joel 2, verse 10 and 11, linked to the day of the Lord. Paul said it was linked to sudden destruction. 
Actually, this earthquake in Revelation is uh, uh, cited about a half a dozen times. It is seen before the uh, seven trumpets clearly. Uh, uh, when this, there's an earthquake, the next verse says seven angels with, with the seven trumpets prepare to sound. But it's also encoded uh, in a way that we don't see it so obviously, but uh, before the seven thunders, uh, a, a lion roars, uh, a mighty angel comes down and, and with a loud voice as a lion roars. And it says that the lion roar in Revelation 5.5 5 is the lion of Judah. And in Joel 3.16 it says the Lord will roar, the heavens and earth will shake. So this is about a big earthquake. And uh, it will initiate these end times. And I believe uh, it's kind of like a... Um, how the cookie crumbles. It's going to crumble several ways and uh, it will draw the uh, church, the general conference church, I believe, to a close. That's how the ancient church of Laodicea ended and it will be the end of uh, uh, lukewarm churches in America that are all content with their materialism. Uh, you, the condemnation in Revelation 3 by the true witness is that you think you're rich and increased with goods. And uh, you don't need anything, but uh, you're really wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. Christ is outside knocking. And so, uh, you know, uh, it will be uh, an interesting time as the all these churches either go two directions. One, uh, they'll melt into a, a new world order and go along with it, or they will go towards God's kingdom, which involves uh, his laws, his statutes and judgments. Uh, not a new deal. It's a renewed deal. And so uh, we can understand that from Ezekiel when, he, when it says that he will um, put his spirit in us, uh, give us a new heart, and cause us to walk in his statutes and judgments. And so we can, we can look forward to that. And that's how we will be his kingdom. And so when uh, the whole situation ends at the end of seven years and Christ comes in the sky, the only people standing will be, uh, I believe, the 144,000 who... Uh, it, it, will, it asks the question in, in Revelation 6 at the end, who will be able to stand? And the next chapter, the ceiling of the 144,000 is are the ones that will be standing. So uh, it won't be a lot of wannabe, oh, I, Lord, I did this, I, want, I, I'm, I did lots of good things in your name. It's going to be those who made a covenant and stick with the covenant. And the covenant is the marriage. That's how we get married. And at the bottom of this uh, video, I'm going to link another video that tells... Uh, uh, five different aspects that are almost totally different than what most people think. They think they're going to be either raptured to heaven uh, or, or that the, the wedding parables involve going to heaven and eating wedding cake there somehow. It's not about that. And uh, God came to Egypt. He afflicted Egypt with judgment and took Israel to a covenant and said, I'm married to you. Paul said all those things happen for examples written for us at the end of the world. We're going to go through a lot of uh, heavy stuff because God said he's going to make a full end of all other nations in Jeremiah 30, verse 11. That's the same story as Daniel 2, verse 44 and 45. God says, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom and it will break in pieces all these other kingdoms. Uh, kingdom meaning dominion of a king. Uh, these governments, earthly governments, are losing their support of people who are rebellious, who see the unfairness of uh, um, certain laws that are designed to help big business maybe, but not the little guy. This government has favored the tobacco industry, even giving uh, funding to tobacco uh, farmers. And then they fund the medical care, which is also drugs, uh, leading cause of death so that they can help the people, uh, but it's largely symptomatic. That's just a little uh, example. But bottom line is we're coming to huge times event in, in the near future, and people need this information, I believe. I believe if we're going to be there uh, for him and ready for his wedding when he comes and knocks, that every Christian ought to have this information. There are 7 billion uh, people on the world and over a billion Christians. And uh, it's about time we start sharing the light. The uh, wedding parables indicate that that's the main thrust of the first wedding parable in Matthew 22. The king makes a marriage for his son and he sends his servants to bid people to the wedding feast. And the next eight verses are trouble getting them there. Uh, they're not interested. It's 
and we've discussed that. It's in the, in the link I'm going to put b below this, and so please look at it as well. But uh, this is just uh, an introduction to uh, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. The gospel is that we can be part of that kingdom, and uh, it's, it's what the disciples wanted, and we should be wanting it as well. It's a time when God is going to use us to take down other kingdoms. Thank you for watching this. Please like it. Please share it. Put it in your email, Facebook, uh, Twitter, whatever. And see you at the top. Thank you so much.